are you going to help them? Like, what about when you're not there? Or when you can't be there? Okay, any more ideas? Yes. Tell them what's at risk. Not only their health, but their lives, their future, and their families. Okay. Yes, Buck. Take Okay, take your chunks. You need more. Right. You know, you can just buy another pack of cigarettes or buy another bottle. So, in other words, what about when they, what about when someone who's resistant, when someone who asks, well, why is it bad for me? I, I like to smoke resistant? marijuana. It feels good. What is resistant? Huh? Well, it just means they don't want to comply with you. Like, like they want to keep smoking marijuana or they want to keep drinking because they don't see what's bad. Well, why is it bad? Like. Like, if I were this person, it's like, well, I don't want to uh, stop. It's good. Well, what would you say then? Like, why is it bad? Okay, you're chewing. Yes, well, but, old Banji, you're chewing too. Yes, Menzies, and oh. who's chewing? <laughs> Go ahead. Who, why, why is it bad? Hold on. Um, long term effects, lungs. Like yeah, like it, 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 if I said I want to uh, keep smoking, thing, but like if it's a family member or someone that you genuinely care about and want to help, how, how would you go about this? Pray. Pray for them. Pray for them. That's good. <laughs> Again, I'm not here to preach, but more along the lines of praying. You have. You have to be there for them, and, and it's just a sense that, like, because chances are that they're using this to feel better, but, I mean, if you feel good without it, there's no purpose for it. it well, how, how are you going to be there for them? Like, uh, but this is someone who's, who's resistant, who wants to keep doing it. How are you going to show them that it's better without it? Show them the video. The video? Those were gross. Mm. Of what? Huh? Of like, I know, they were gross, but it's good. Like, Corporal, Corporal Bulger, and uh, he likes to use himself as a common example. He said if he, if he were to see those videos when he was your age, he would have never smoked. And now he stopped. And he said it was just incredibly hard, hard to stop. stop. So, again, how, how are you going to help them? Because, again, I've... I've been getting like call the cops and like tell them it's bad. But what what if they don't believe you? Like you don't have to. Every time you see them, you don't have to uh, be be like, did you stop doing drugs? Just be their friend. Set an example for them. Show them that yes. Okay. You you keep chewing, and that's why I keep talking. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You can, you can like, you can oh, like, like chill and grab, like, you know how there's like apple from there, there's like stuff there, like the cinnamon, you can like blow like this, and you bake it, and then you put it, like, bake it. I don't no. think that's a good idea. Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't you think, make them stop. you have an idea. I, I don't think that's a good idea, and it's uh, um, unreal. Um, but you set the example. You don't do drugs if you act right. If pe people want to act right. Like, how many of you probably rub off or your friends rub off on you? What do you mean? Every hand should be right. North. <laughs> North. No, no, you, you roll on <laughs> Like, mean? like just how, how you like to be around your friends. You like people who like stuff that you like, right? And you kind of rub off on each other. So, you want to set an example for all of you to follow. That, that person in trouble, wh whether they're young or old, well, you, you set that example of you can be better and life works without this drug, no matter what the problem is. Because, I don't know, the, pro the problem, it may be something that you relate to. Like, let's just uh, pick out a problem. Like, pro a problem that everyone will face at one point in their life. It's de death of a... Uh, a loved one. So, 
Oh. Depending on how you guys reacted, like, um, of course you mourn, but what what if someone who turns to some alternative, like, like drugs? It's do, just because it hit them that hard, or, or I don't know, some people <laughs> do it uh, for breakups, but um, it's how how you help them. You just be their friend, right? You show them that it's no. You don't? Well, if they're having trouble, you be there you be there for them. It doesn't you don't have to always preach to them of how many people got cancer this year from smoking. It's you're just there for them. And you set the example. The people will, will if you don't curse, people will ask you, why don't you curse? The answer simply is I don't have to. I don't have to talk that way. Right? Yes. I just told my friends Say what? I just told my friends all the time. Right. See, I don't like to curse. It's wrong. Let's say you, let's say you smoke. You've been smoking for a really long time, and that person says, "How would you quit? Would you just give them like a paper?" Hmm. Um, for a long time, I mean, you you consult a doctor, like, well, I mean, because like they do that. The, for five years again, everything's reversible, because um, like they give you nicotine pets because your body does um, adapt to it. It does start to need that just because it gets it gets lazy and you have to strengthen it up again like a muscle. Like if you used to be able to do 50 push-ups and like you're obese now, you're not just gonna be like I'm gonna do 50 today. 50 today, man. But you got to work, dude. Yes. How can a person say that like they're addicted to chew? Like you can get to like shredded beef packs every day if they want. Oh yeah, I hear that. Like people like chew on the ends of pencils yeah. after. Like help them out, give them things that can you know so they can start fidgeting with instead of. Yeah, that's a good. Clarify something very quickly. In the drug demand reduction program, its the intent is not to scare you. It is not to tell you your value or a principle. Here's what it's supposed to be telling you. You got something to draw with. This is a blown up version of the human brain. This is the front. In the frontal portion of the brain, when you are born, that section is not connected to the rest of the brain. It's called the frontal cortex. What does that mean? What it means is as you watch your parents, as you watch your brothers and sisters, your cousins, you pick up on it. You pick up and you store it in your brain. And the frontal part of your, your brain says, this is a value to me. I've got to remember that. Remember when you were really a young kid, a real small kid, and you were wondering about people said, go away. They just discharged you, didn't want to explain anything to you. You had to learn it by seeing it, knowing it, smelling it. You knew when you were in your diapers and you did something in your diapers, you knew it. You had something in your diapers, didn't you? Well, here you are grown up, almost. This part of the brain has to be wired to the rest of the brain. Now, let me take a kid who's 12 years old and decides, you know, I like the, the feeling, the THC. What is THC? Anybody? Exactly right. What is E-T-O-H? Alcohol, chemical symbol for alcohol. What is P-O-O? -O? The beginning of poop. Now listen, this part of your brain is not developed in your age group. So if you start drinking and you start smoking and you start using mind-altering drugs at an early age, this will not get wired. You will not be able to attend to your realizations around you. Let me give you an example of that. I know a young fellow who started off when he was 12 years old. He is now 37 years old. He's been in and out of jail. He's constantly losing his car. He's constantly getting in trouble, criminal-wise, because in this part of the brain it says, this is the part that tells you what to do right and what to do wrong. When you know what to do right and you do wrong, you've got a problem. Don't you? 
I mean, you think about how many times you had to make a decision on your own, and you made the wrong decision, and you got in trouble for it. If not, you made the right decision, and everything was cool. This generally takes place, generally, at the age of 25. Anybody in the group here who's 25 years old right now? No, sir. 21? No, sir. 15? No, sir. Okay, 12? 10? 8? You are now in this group that this part of the brain is starting to wire itself to the rest of the brain. It's telling you exactly what is going to be right in your life and what is going to be wrong. That's why when you read a sign that says, do not touch wet paint, what do you do? do not what do you do? do not touch. Don't touch it, right? What, is it, what if it said, electricity, do not touch? Are you going to touch it? No. Because that part of the brain is telling you, don't do that. All of a sudden, you got a student that's next to you, and you're in the fourth grade, fifth grade, and he says, hey, you want to try this? I got this stuff from my mom. And it's really good. She's cool after she takes these pills. Are you going to try that too? No. Why not? He's cool. It's because up here you're starting to learn the values of life. And that does not come different from any other human being. We're all the same. If you, don't, if you use THC, alcohol, or any type of mind-altering drug at an early age, this part is cut off. And so when you go through life and you're 20, 30, 40 years old, you can't make decisions. A lot of people think it's because when I take on this THC or this alcohol and things, that all of a sudden your body's going to be different. It isn't. This part, the brain, takes on a different shape. It starts to think differently. So that's why it's important today that you learn about DDR. By not taking these drugs early on in your life, before you can make a good decision as an adult, you'll be able to do that. Why, why do people take THC anyway? It, the, the question was asked. To alter your mind. Why would you want to alter your mind? Because you don't like where you're at. So you're going to change that to feel good until something happens. So would you like to have this part of your brain not connected to the rest of the brain when you're 30 years old and you got a family or you're in the military or you're a business person and you can't make decisions. That's really why drugs are not good for you unless, unless they are prescribed by who? Doctor. 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 Or a nurse in a lot of cases. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to go? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next thing is, once this wiring starts to take place, it can't go back. It doesn't retract. But what does retract, as Sergeant was talking about, those two things that go up into your, into your chest here. What do they call those things? Yeah. Underneath the chest? Huh? Lungs. lungs. What happens to these lungs when you're a baby? When you first get born? They start to form. Huh? They start to form. First, you have to take in that first breath, don't you? What, what happens after that? You keep breathing, don't you? For the rest of your life. Now, let's, let's just say that this guy is born for the first time, and I say to him, take in your first breath, and I'm going to dump sand into your mouth. Aren't you doing the same thing when you smoke? That very same lung that you took when you were a baby is now still with you when you're a teenager. So you start smoking, and guess what's in the smoke? Chemicals. What kind of chemicals? Anybody know? Go. Uh, rocket fuel. What else? Tar. Anybody else? Rocket fuel. Go ahead. Carbon monoxide. You bet. If you're dumping all this stuff, and, and the, the one chemical he just mentioned, it's like sniffing the back part of an exhaust pipe on a car. And that's the truth. And you suck it into those lungs that you just got, just got born with. Now, does that help you? Because as time goes by, like with this part of the brain, if you don't nurture it, take care of it, your body gives way. I've known people with lung cancers, with other problems of the lungs, where they could hardly just take that breath, that one breath. And usually young people. 
Couldn't run a block. So what happens to them? Anybody know? What is the end result of smoking and damaging these lungs? Do you? Yes. Or do you die fast? Or do you die slowly? Very slowly. Because the lungs start each, what they call lobes are in the lungs, and each one of those lobes start to get a lot of carcinogenics that are in the cigarettes. In, in, in addition, you have the monoxides, you have other chemicals that are going into those lobes, and they do not come clean. There's no way to wash those lungs out. There's only one way to do it. Well, excuse me, two ways to do it. Anybody know what they are? To get them clean? Yes. To stop. Okay. To stop. stop is one way. To cut them open. Yeah. Okay. To cut them open. In other words, surgery. You can replace these by having a transplant. Would you like a transplant today? No. Well, if you're smoking, you're bound for it. Now, has anybody in this room ever started smoking really, truly? I'm not going to turn, turn you in or anything like that. Anybody smoked a cigarette? Anybody in the house that smoked a cigarette? Yeah, yeah? Anybody on the side? Okay. You got parents or cousins or aunts and uncles? Do they smoke? What about that stuff that comes out of their lungs and as they're lighting that cigarette, what happens to it? You breathe it. It's called secondary smoke. So not only are you harming your lungs, but you're, you're harming the person that is right next to you if you smoke. Okay? THC, on the other hand, is a whole different ballgame. That affects the brain real quick like. That's why people use marijuana or cannabis as it's known. <coughs> they use it because it stops the brain from functioning as a normal brain. Is it good or bad? Let me tell you something. It's good if you are a child with epilepsy and you had 135 seizures today. Cannabis is good for that child. Is it good for every child? No. No, no way. Because this part of the brain is being damaged, not being hooked up. So where does that leave us with alcohol? What does alcohol do to the body? It makes you crazy. The liver. It destroys the liver. Say again? It destroys the liver. It destroys the liver over a long period of time, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, after you drink alcohol, it's like poison your liver can't fully... But does it affect anything I've drawn? Um, yes, sir. It, um, because the body can't metabolize it, it goes into your blood and eventually the blood will right. cross the brain. Cool. Uh, doesn't it have an effective kidney failure? Yeah, in a way. Yes. Doesn't it kill brain cells? Say again? Doesn't it kill brain cells? I was just going to get to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Alcohol does something that's really strange again. And notice I've draw, drawn the main point up here on the board. It affects the brain. Because as it metabolizes, as Sergeant was talking about, it goes through your system. And once it hits the brain, it sets up a kind of a barrier right around the brain, the whole brain, and bathes it in alcohol. So the more you use, what's going to happen to the brain? Go ahead. It actually shrinks. Kills it all. I'll tell you, have any of you experimented with just a chicken bone and a glass of Coke? You haven't? When you go home and you have fried chicken sometimes, some of you may want roasted chicken, I don't know. That's, that's up to you, but it has to have a bone. Okay? You take the bone, you take a glass of soda or Coke, preferably, and you put that bone in there and leave it for two days. What's going to happen? Anybody? It dissolves. It sucks out the calcium, the phosphorus, and all the other things that are in the bone. That's proof positive that some of these chemicals will destroy your body from within. Today's talk, yes? I mean, I mean, like, Coke, Coca-Cola is actually used to, like, clean up blood, and you can put on the engine and just, like, be rested. Sure can. Because of, because of the chemicals in it, right? Yeah. And we drink it for a soda, huh? That's yeah. great on their time on here, we're drinking this Coke. Go ahead. Um, is it bad to eat fried chicken with Coca-Cola? Uh, I'll just say this. No. Too much of any, anything is, is bad. So in terms of soda, too much of it could harm you. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about cannabis, 
alcohol and smoking cigarettes. Those are the three main things that young people see others doing. And when you see another person doing it, you just have to put it in your head. What are they doing to the brain? How is that affecting them? And if you go to a party and somebody's got a pint with them or some juice, as they call it, and they're drinking alcohol and they're only 15, guess what's happening to their brain? Over a period of time, period of time meaning 10, 20, 30 years, the brain starts to be destroyed. Now we have what we call alcoholic, what? Dementia. It means you can't think at all anymore. Not for yourself. You have to be cared for 24-7. That's what alcohol will do to you. That's what THC or cannabis will do to you at a young age. And that's what cigarettes will do to your lungs before you even get started. Now, how many of you want to continue using cigarettes? Raise your hand. Anybody else want to use cannabis? What were you going to do? Raise your hand? <laughs> okay. Let me tell you, there are many children, young people. There's a place over here in Stoddard Well Road. Actually, it's uh, Dale Evans Parkway, 515. Anybody <coughs> been in that little building out there? It's called Juvenile Detention. How many young people do you think that are in there because of what we're talking about right now? A whole bunch. Huh? A whole bunch. They broke the law, and they actually harmed their own lives. Can you stop it? Yes. No, you can't. And that's what this class is all about. Not letting you start and making sure you understand you have a choice. And that choice comes from right here in your brain. That's the part that says, yes, I'm going to get in trouble. No, I'm not going to get in trouble if I make the right decision. Yes. Um, one of my brothers, he started using cocaine and smoking when I wanted to get cocaine. Yeah. Doesn't take long. How old? Um, now he's 16. 16. When did, do you know when he started at all? Um, I think, I found out when he was 16 and he ran away from home, but I thought he started using cocaine. So his decisions were off, weren't they? I had a brother. My brother liked Two things. He liked crack. He liked alcohol. He definitely liked cannabis. But that heroin that he used actually took away his liver, and he died a horrible death. He was much younger than me. And I watched him deteriorate over the years, like you. Watch him make the wrong decisions in his life. Watch him lo lose jobs hand over fist. And he was a very good hairdresser. He was a creative person, loving person, loved him deeply. But I also had to cremate him because he wouldn't stop the drugs. He was 55 years old when that came about. But I remember when he was a kid, he started out just with cigarettes. And then he went on to lose his liver. So bear that in mind when you hear this class and you realize that what we're talking about here is not stopping you from doing something, but to think about what it can do to you. So what are we talking about? What kind of drugs so far? Um, Go. Next. Right? What's, what's a chemical name for cannabis? No, no. Marijuana is a, a, what they call a kind of a slang word. Mary Jane is a slang word. T. Tetrahydrocannabinol. Somebody said over here. Okay, it's a chemical. Is it good? Yes, for some people. No, for a lot of others. Because a lot of people smoke it. And it's the same thing as buying a pack of cigarettes. By the way, can any of you go in the store right now and buy a pack of cigarettes? No. no. Why not? Older. How old do you have to be? 21 and older. What is it, about a dime a pack? Yep, it's like four bucks. A dime? Four bucks. Four bucks a, a, a pack, right? So here you are burning up four dollars, sticking it in your mouth and smoking it. That's basically it. Alcohol, sometimes you can get it from home or from your friends. Reality is, what's your decision going to be? Is it going to be, it's not good for me, therefore I won't do it? Or, 
yeah, I think I'll try it and end up out here on Dale Evans Parkway. First stop to prison. Does everybody go there? No. Because they say to themselves and to their friends, this is not a good thing to do. You are here this morning in the Young Marines because you made a choice. You made a choice between what you're going to do this Saturday and what you're not going to do this Saturday. How many of you would like to have stayed in bed this morning? See? But you came here because you made a choice. And that same choice can be made every day of your life. Okay? When it comes to drugs, you have that choice. If I were your age today, I would be frightened. Some of the drugs are really, really bad. Okay? So when it comes to using drugs or smoking or using alcohol, Remember this little symbol I've written, drawn up here. It's your brain that's taken all the impact. It's the brain, the one that you use every day for all kinds of purposes, every purpose. And every time you do what you're not supposed to do, this brain is what you're punishing. Eventually, the rest of the systems in your body shut down if you do it over a long period of time. And that includes pharmaceuticals that are given out by doctors. If it isn't prescribed to you, don't take it. It's not for your purpose. Anybody have any questions? No, sir. Do you have a question? I have a question. Um, if you were curious one time and you, um, someone offered you uh, marijuana and you only took one hit of it, yep. did it do any damage to you? Probably not. Probably not. And it depends on how much you... Is it smoking? You're taking a joint? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. If you're taking it in, you're, you, the only way you can take it in is to take a deep breath, right? And then hold it. What do you think the, the smoke's doing? Gets down in the lungs and then what? First, first layer, let's put it that way. If you keep doing it, another layer, another layer, another layer. So it's not just your brain, it's your lungs, too. So no, I don't think you're going to have a detrimental problem. It's not going to be that bad if you hit one jo uh, did one joint. But I am going to tell you that if you continue doing it, you're going to have a problem. Yes? If a kid um, drank a teeny bit of alcohol, would his brain still be damaged? Yes. Especially if you were young. Don't forget, when you're your age, this brain is still developing. You're still... Uh, let me give you an example. Back in 1999, I was getting ready to go to church. So I was at home, I was in my shower like every other Sunday, getting ready to go to church. All of a sudden, I fell to the floor of the, of the shower stall. I couldn't get up. I didn't know what was wrong. My wife came in. She got the ambulance, my next-door neighbor, to help me. And I was in the hospital over here at St. Mary's. They, they did all that machine stuff, you know, with the MRIs and what have you. And they couldn't find anything. So they let me go home. One month to the day... I fell again. Guess what? They said I had two tumors, one on each side of my brain. And from those two tumors, I, was, I could not see, could not hear, could not function. Didn't know who I was. Didn't know how to do anything. I was back to being an infant. Everybody had to do things for me. Now, that was in 1999. They found out that it wasn't tumors. It was tuberculosis that had attacked my brain. Right down here in the bottom of the brain is a place called the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is the one that takes care of your respiratory system, temperature, all that other kind of stuff. The TB that I had was growing right here. And it was attacking my brain, blowing out cells. So I went to the neurologist after I was out of the hospital for six months. The, the doctor said, okay, here's what... Here's what's going to happen to you. You're either going to be a cripple for the rest of your life, or you're going to have to work like hell. And working in that capacity, I had to learn everything you do for, just as you do every day. How to drink, how to remember phone numbers, how to remember your friends' names, how to remember what you're supposed to do. Even as simple as putting on your pants and your shoes it was tough for me. The year 2000, I don't remember it. But the year 2001, I remember every day of it. Because I, from that point on, I had to learn to reuse my brain. So, did I smoke marijuana to have that damage? 
No, it had to do with tuberculosis. Yes. Secondhand smoke will all de definitely do the same thing as firsthand smoke. So this dude used to smoke when he was younger. I stopped in 1991. So here's what happened. This brain started to come back little by little by little. All those little dendrites and little nerve endings started to come back together again. And I was able to speak, walk, talk, and do the things that I normally would as an adult. My lungs were clear, except for one spot of tuberculosis. Question? Um, would smoking do the same thing that happened with, uh, what happened to you with tuberculosis and eventually killing off your brain cells? Yes, the question is, would a disease of the lungs do the same thing as smoking? Is that what your question would be? Uh, yeah. Kind of sort of? That's on the brain. Kind of sort of. Well, no, brains are brains. It doesn't matter who you are. The brain functions in the same manner every day for all of us. Now, the problem with that is secondhand smoke definitely doesn't help you at all. It's kind of like that, the one joint. Does that one joint hurt you? No, it's several will. So it's, a, it's really an accumulation of the things that you're doing. So once you try it, and if you like it, guess what? You're on your road to damaging your brain, your lungs, your body, and your life. That's why we talk about it here, so that you understand that drug demand reduction is not to say all drugs, because there's drugs like prescription drugs, right? Have any of you been at a doctor and the doctor writes you out a prescription, tells your mom or dad, you can take it to the pharmacy, they fill it out. And some young people go in that cabinet and they steal a couple of pills here and there. Take them to school, tell somebody else, one of their fellow students, classmates, here, try these. These are cool. And they take that very same medication that was meant for an adult. They don't understand that the amount of medi medication they're taking is higher for, for an adult than it is for a child. So they're getting four times the amount of medication. Oxycontin is one of them. Hydrocodone is another. All the opiates are, can be prescribed drugs. So all of that is in your life. It is all around you, and it's here forever. The decision you have to make today is, do you want this to fail you, or do you want to go on to become an adult and be something in your life? That's your decision. Anybody have any other questions? Yes. With um, that part of the brain, like the front, mm -hmm. frontal part. Do, do cigarettes like? Attach that, like, like you're saying, like does it attack, it won't attach to the brain, the cigarettes? No, when I say well, hardwire, here's what I mean. When you're born, this section of the brain, the front part of the brain, is the one that adapts to your environment. It tells you, when, when your mom says don't do this, your dad says do that, and you respond accordingly, this part of the brain isn't really seriously wired up. But as you become 18, 19, 20 years old, that's when it starts to wire to the rest of the brain. And it tells you your values. Okay? Can cigarettes affect it? Say? Can cigarettes affect it? Absolutely. Absolutely. How? Through the lungs. Through the lungs. Once these systems go down, you're done. You're done. So if you start early, you get to catch up on the older people who are already dying. And you'll do it much younger. Okay? So that's why we're talking to you about this today. Drug demand reduction doesn't mean get rid of all drugs. It means stop, think, and do it right. That's all it means. So when you're confronted with it, you'll know what to do. Yes? Say again, son. I'm sorry. If you just like smoke it once, it's gonna only affect the first letter. It will, it, it, if you're, if you, let's say you do it, did it today, and you smoke one cigarette or half a cigarette, and it's filtered, will it damage your lungs? Okay, let me put it to you another way. If I paint you with one coat of paint, is that gonna damage your body? What if I did it a hundred times? You think it'll damage your body? 
Why? Because it's clog clogging up your pores on your skin, right? Can't sweat. And it'll kill you. Same thing with inside your lungs. You keep coating the inside of those lungs. Believe me, when I was a corpsman in the Navy, and we did autopsies on people for various reasons of their death, and we opened some of those lungs, and the guy, we knew exactly who smoked and who didn't. Because your lungs would be pink, and it would be very fibrous. People who smoked, when you took out their lungs, they were blackish, gooey, and they were like jelly. People who smoke for long periods of time. And I was one of them. But I got smart enough to stop. Once I stopped, my lungs started to come back. I'm not 100%, but I'll sure say I'm 90%. But if I hadn't smoked at all, I'd be 100%. That's the difference. So if you do it one time as an experiment, or a buddy tells you this is a good thing, that's up to you to make that decision. That's why the front part of your brain it's so necessary for me to tell you that today. You're the one who's going to make the decision, not anybody else. All right? Anybody else? Yes? Have people died because they can't get any oxygen to the brain because of all that smoking? Every day. Anybody seen that advertisement where the lady has a little hole in the throat? Yeah. What do they call that, th that hole? A stoma. A stoma. Other than a hole. <laughs> stoma. Stoma. Huh? Stoma. stoma. The stoma is what? The instrument that goes down inside that little steel piece of tubing? They call it a cricoid tracheotomy. They make a slit right between the V and your, th your throat there. You can feel it. Right? The last bone in your cartilage in your throat. Most of the guys who, who can feel their Adam's apple can feel it very quickly. The, the girls, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's there. And that's where you slice it open. And you put this little tube down in there. First you use what they call a plastic tube and you stuff as much, uh, you suck out as much uh, fluids as you can. And then you go back in and you feed them oxygen. And if they still can't breathe, if these lungs can't expand and contract on their own, then the result is what? That's why they have this. And they can no longer expand it. Yes? Probably not. Probably not. Oh, let me take that back. If you put the lighted end in your mouth, it would hurt you right then and there. Okay? But if you didn't do that and you, you smoked a cigarette, maybe in a half one, it shouldn't affect you. But if you kept doing it, like the layers of paint, you're coating the lungs. Pretty soon the brain can't tell the lungs, expand, give me some air, let me breathe. And if you've ever helped somebody who could not breathe, I guarantee you that's an experiment now. Okay? Any other questions? Ladies and gentlemen. Yes? I don't have a question. I was going to say that I brought my video over. No. Good. Does anybody know what these classes are for? The DDR class? Go ahead. Is it for us to send an example for other people and they, they see how we go? You became a young Marine, what for? Because you like the uniform? Yeah. To be a leader, right? Yes. To be something different. That's why you're, when you're a leader, you have to show differences. Sometimes it's, no, I don't want to do it. DDR is a program that's put on by the DEA. Anybody know what the DEA stands for? Drug Enforcement Agency? You're going to say that, right? Okay. <laughs> DEA stands for Drug Enforcement Agency. And what it is, with the Pentagon, the two of them got together and said, look, let's teach our young people about what it can do to you if you make the wrong choice. So you are going to, after these classes are done, we have to do one every three months. And we keep escalating what the subject's going to be. Pretty soon you get to the point where you've got the, the right credit hours for these classes. And uh, do you not get a ribbon for that? Anybody know? What's the name of the ribbon? DDR. DDR. And someday you alone are going to have to go to school and put on your own class, just like I'm doing right now, in order to get another ribbon. So that's why I'm asking you to pay attention. 
to what's going on. It's not a room, it's like the bicycle. Okay, otherwise, this unit also gets an award. It's called the Camarino Award, and it's about drug demand reduction. And all of you together can make that happen. But alone, you got to make decisions in your life. It won't be the only decision you make in your life, but I can assure you it's well worth the effort to not do it early on. You can make all the decisions you want when you're 100 years old, but when you're your age, there's no turning back. Okay? Yes. Oh, I <laughs> okay. We just have to bring it. What, the, what effect does like a vapor cigarette have on your lung? Vapor? Like an e-cigarette? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's two kinds of vapors. That's why I asked. One, one vaporizing for smoking is through the e-vapor, and the other is vaporized uh, THC. Uh, you can do it through vapor. It's been around for a hundred years. It's called uh, the, the Turkish used uh, Turkish people used it called a hookah. I don't know if you know what a hookah is. What is a hookah? It is like a little tube that puts a button. It's kind of like a Like a big bottle, yeah. right? With water in it. Yes. It's got tubes coming out of it, and just like the e-cigarette, you smoke on it, and the smoke comes through the water vapor and comes to you as a vapor. Supposedly, it'll knock down the nicotine. Why do you do the hookah if you don't want the effect of the nicotine? The nicotine is true. Okay, and so do some of those carcinogens. So you got to be careful of what you use. E-cigarettes, are the, the jury's still out as to whether or not they're harming anybody, but the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is looking into whether or not they are harmful. I don't, I don't know, uh, but I can assure you if you are... Looking at e-cigarettes instead of smoking a regular cigarette, aren't you doing the same thing only as a substitute? Mm -hmm. You're picking up a habit you really don't need. Okay, it's like wearing your shoes on a different foot. <laughs> Why? I love okay. more. Yeah. Anybody else? Ladies and gentlemen, young Marines, thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day. All right.